you know, it wouldn't be such a bad idea, you know, go ahead and put on your tinfoil crazy hat and go to Costco today, you know, get a few extra supplies, a few gallons of water, you know, all that kind of stuff. It wouldn't be a bad idea, I think, at this point. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for September 30th through October 7th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one-ounce gold Canadian maples at just $60 over spot. Next, we have 2024 one-ounce silver Britannia at $3.10 over spot. And finally, the 2024 one-ounce silver American Eagle is still just $5.25 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey, everyone. This is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Craig Hemke from TF Metals Report. Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. Always good to see you, my friend. A lot going on today. There is a lot going on. Uh, Obviously, the conflicts in the Middle East um, are causing gold to go higher, the stock market to take a bit of a beating today. Your perspective on this? Um, Yeah, it's that. I think this longshoreman strike uh, was impacting things overnight, too. But there's yeah, so here we are. It's October, (laughs) uh, the month before the U.S. election, and the surprises start as soon as the calendar flips. And it'll be very interesting to see the concerns as we record this on uh, Tuesday morning is that Iran is preparing to launch uh, ballistic missiles back at Israel. I'd say that those aren't just rumors. Um, The U.S. certainly has uh, probably dozens of satellites um, that are over Iran taking pictures. And uh, with their, you know, the U.S., if we were ever to start a war, we just hit a button, right? in Iran, though, their their ballistic missiles are in bunkers and hangars, you know, and hidden from sight. And so if you're going to use them, you're going to roll those babies out, and then it's going to take a while to make sure they're fueled up and all that stuff. And that's no doubt what the U.S. satellites are seeing. And that's why uh, all, the, all the rumors uh, today are that, is that a launch is imminent. Now, maybe by the time this airs tonight, um, it won't have happened. Let's, let's pray and hope that's the case. Um, if it does happen, then kind of all bets are off. The uh, U.S. said it'll respond as well. Um, and then where do we go from there? Uh, does Iran mine the Strait of Hormuz, you know, cutting out what is it, 20% of the U.S. crude oil or world crude oil flows through there, right? Um, I Anyway, you just don't know where this could head. It certainly complicates things for Jerry Powell. <laughs> That's right. But that's why he makes the big bucks, Elijah. Um, yeah, it's a scary time. It, it seems like we've been at this moment where, you know, we're one step away from World War Three for quite a while now. And it seems like things are actually escalating quite a bit. Um, now, as you mentioned, kind of all bets are off uh, if if, you know, Iran strikes Israel or or, or whatnot. So. Your perspective, then, if we do see this escalation, um, it, it seems like gold would just continue to rise. Or wh- how do you see the markets reacting to this? That's a challenge. You know, so much is done by computer. Remember, the old joke was, you know, you blow off a nuclear bomb in New York City. But, you know, if the dollar goes up, you know, the gold would go down and and stock futures would rally and that kind of thing. You don't know um, how this might play out. And so I just I would encourage everybody. Uh, listening to try to uh, maintain a long-term view, you know, that kind of that Jerry Powell view, you know, Elijah's like was two weeks ago, Powell cuts 50 basis points, right? And he's like, what's he doing? The stock market's at all time highs and all this kind of jazz. When, I mean, it's pretty much accepted fact knowledge that there's a lagging effect to the minimal amount of things that, the Fed ever can do, which is cut like the Fed funds rate. Yeah, it takes six to nine months. That's why inflation got out of control. They waited too long to start hiking. And by the time they're hiking, you know, and by the time that had an impact, when we get to 9% even measured by the CPI. So a better question would be, rather than what is he doing? What is he thinking? What does he see? 
I mean, where does he think this is all going to be by June? By nine months from now, you know, if he's cutting 50 basis points and now, you know, it's basically 50-50 that they're going to do another 50 basis point cut in five weeks, the next F. What are they worried about? So you got to kind of keep an eye on, you know, a bigger picture. And, you know, in the short term, who knows what crude oil might do? Who knows how this longshoreman strike might impact things? Um, yeah, I, most people, maybe people haven't seen the head of that union talking. He's like, look, they can, what is it, the Taft-Hawley Act or whatever the heck it's called, Taft-Hartley Act, where the president can demand that any union go back to work for 90 days for a cooling off period. Okay, that's fine. He goes, that's fine. We'll go back to work, but we're not going to work at the same pace. You know, we'll unload one ship a day rather than 10. You know, because everybody's on break, you know, or out on sick leave or something like that. So all these things, look, I don't know, in the short term, you know, tomorrow, the next day, how it impacts gold and silver. But I certainly think, you know, in the three to six to nine month time frame, um, they augur for higher prices. Definitely. I know, I know I've been speaking to a few people like Christopher Mulan, for example, I had on yesterday and was, he was saying that we could be in for a pullback actually uh, for gold. Your perspective on that, he's looking for possibly a retracement uh, to 2000 or even possibly lower uh, given his technical analysis right now. Yeah. I, 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 I think the world of Chris, he's a good dude. Um, but in, there are some instances where, you know, just looking at the price, you know, on a candlestick chart doesn't tell you the whole story um, in any market, futures market. But let's just concentrate on gold. Um, physical metal has to be delivered at that price. OK, so you can look at the chart and say, oh, I might pull back to, you know, people were saying to go back to twelve hundred when we we're at two thousand a year ago. Well, the problem is. If you're going to determine the price to be twelve hundred dollars by smashing the futures market, you know, because everybody's you know, looking for liquidity and all that kind of stuff. Well, then there are going to be buyers at 1200 that demand physical metal, you know, central banks and the like. I don't. And so you've got to be able to physically deliver metal that's demanded physical metal at 12. So if you can somehow wipe out all physical demand when you wipe out the price back under 2000, OK, then fine. Maybe it can go there. But I think that physical demand finally, you know, kind of creates a floor under it. And it sure seems unrelenting, whether it's related, you know, to BRICS buying or if it's just global central banks, you know, record pace now, third year in a row, accumulating, you know, getting out of dollars and getting into gold. So um, I think it's unlikely that you get, you know, some kind of sustained wipeout like that. But at the same time, you go back to August the 5th when, you know, you had this yen carry trade unwind and there was this massive run for global liquidity and margin calls. Well, the only thing that really had a bid for U.S. based investors at three in the morning that Monday was gold and silver. They trade 23 hours a day and gold went down a hundred bucks in four hours because it had a bid and people were, you know, you're and, he, and here we're at a time when all of you know, record amount of hedge fund longs in gold. So if something happens and there's a global liquidity squeeze and a panic and, and people need to sell something that anything is not nailed down, well, not only look for something with a bid, you look for something that's got a profit in it. And if you're a hedge fund and you're long a couple hundred contracts at 2,200 or 2,500 or something like that, that might be the first thing you sell. So yeah, for sure. Uh, gold could go down sharply really any day based on what's going on. But uh, long term, again, uh, the physical demand, I mean, the, the price is traded in New York, but the physical is traded in London. You still got to flow metal into that price. And if, if demand for physical metal is such that, I mean, it continues the way it is. And I mean, it's just, it's really hard to see where price goes down that far. We definitely have seen an increase in demand uh, after the summer doldrums uh, in the retail space here. Um, I guess your perspective then on silver as well, we're at around $30, $31 right now. Um, and if this conflict in the Middle East and 
you know, the financial system as a whole, right, with the Fed cutting interest rates continues in the direction it, it has it has been going over the last couple months. Your perspective on where silver could be uh, maybe by the end of the year? Well, uh, I bet we I bet the last time we, sp- we spoke, Elijah, I, I kind of had that seesaw analogy. Remember that? Where gold's on one end and copper's on the other and silver's kind of in the middle. You know, and if gold's going up and the rest of the commodities like copper are going down, silver just kind of sits there. And that's kind of what's happened for the last four months now. Um, but l- recently, copper's been moving higher and that's allowed silver to move back into the 30s. So it's going to take, um, hopefully, copper continuing to go up. It's going to take gold continuing to go up to eventually get silver to levitate higher. It's a little bit like what happened earlier this year. You know, in, in March, gold broke out above 2100 and rallied to 2400 and silver just kind of sat there and everybody's pulling their hair out. And I remember, and again, it's probably something you and I talked about. Well, well, the gold silver ratio is probably not going to a hundred at some point silver will rush to catch up if gold keeps going up. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, silver went from 24 to 33 in about six weeks. If gold keeps going, the same thing will happen again, regardless of copper or whatever, because people will see that kind of pair trade and they'll go, Oh, wait a second. If gold now is, I don't know, pick a number, $3,000, doesn't make sense that silver is only 30. And in a really short period of time, it'll go to 40. Um, So that's that's probably what I would, in terms of silver, that's what I'd be watching, you know, is that if gold's going to keep going, if, then eventually silver will rush to catch up again. Uh, It it has in the past. It probably will do so again. Again, it's very frustrating uh, to own silver, obviously. If you've been accumulating it over 14, 15 years like I have, and your cost basis is under 20, well, then whatever. But if you haven't bought any for the last 12 years, and then you see um, yesterday, the end of September, silver closed at its highest monthly close since January of 2013, you have an entirely different perspective, right? And that's that's you know, frustrating, obviously, to a lot of people. So um, uh, the chart looks really good. The chart of the GDX, the long-term chart for the GDX looks really good. Um, we just got to continue to wait for that follow-through. And mentioning the GDX, your perspective on Myers at the moment, it seems like maybe they're finally starting to catch up. Maddening is what they are. Um, here again, we just closed out September. Gold was up 5.2% on the month. Silver was up just a shade under 8% on the month, and the GDX was up 3.1%. Um, when we're talking mining shares, any stock, really, you need more buyers than sellers. I mean, it's not it, at its core, that's what it is. And there are no buyers. Nobody cares, man. I mean, Agnico Eagle can make 14, is currently making $1,400 on every single ounce that they pull out of the ground. Nobody cares. So until we get to the spot, you know, where people are actually invested in the sector, where not just you and I, I'm, you know, mutual funds and hedge funds and institutions are more uh, concerned with value rather than growth, then they continue to lag. Now, again, the the problem that it's also a good thing is that when they move, they'll go really fast. You know, you go back to 2016, you know, the HUI index was under 100 in January of that year. And by August, it was 270. And if you weren't in in January, then you waited and you chased and you waited for a pullback. Then finally by July, you're like, okay, I'm all in. And then that, you know, you're buying at the top. So you've got to kind of go through all of these agonizing months of watching and going, why is it only a 3%? For then ultimately when they do, boom, just, you know, really, really, again, I mentioned Agnico Eagle. Whoa, 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 February was what a forty-five dollar stock, and now it's an eighty dollar stock. You know, if you were holding it in February, well, okay. But if you bought it, you know, last month, you're just you're pulling your hair out. I mean, it's, it's not moving up with gold the way you'd like. And so, um, I, I, what I personally hold are mining. I have some explorers. I try to focus on the ones that aren't top heavy with management and you know, DEI departments and ESG departments and all this kind of stuff. 
you know, like Newmont or Barrick. Give me the ones that just pull it out of the ground, do so efficiently and do keep their costs down. Um, and I, again, over time you'll do okay, but boy, that, um, they are, ag- I mean, they're very frustrating to watch. There's no doubt about it. One of the things you said really caught my attention there. You said how no one cares at the moment. And I think that is maybe a good sign long-term for the miners and also for precious metals. It seems like, you know, gold isn't making headlines every day, even though it's near all time highs and it's had this huge run. So it seems like the mainstream has yet to really jump on the bandwagon. And, and that's just, again, more confirmation that, as you said at the beginning, you know, long-term, there's still a really bright future for gold, most likely. Yeah, I I saw a survey again recently. It's something more than 90% of global financial advisors have a under 5% allocation of the precious metals. And like 72% have under 1%. And there are a number of reasons for that. I mean, if you're everybody from your financial planner to a hedge fund, they need to grow. They need growth because they're collecting fees off of that, Right. Uh, whether it's just a 50 basis point management fee, you know, or, or all the way up to a two and 20 of a hedge fund, they need to grow, you know, and the mining sector is not perceived of as growth, right? And certainly not going to recommend physical gold. How are you going to wrap that with a wrap fee? And it doesn't pay interest, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just not on anybody's radar. What we all wait for is the return of when it is. You know, you see down days. Some you, you see these headlines sometimes. You know, on a big, you know, S and P falls one and a half percent in a day, and they'll say the Magnificent Seven lost market cap of three hundred billion dollars. Three hundred billion. And you think, oh my gosh, if just a you know a fraction of that money was peeled off and reallocated, you know, to our sector, thirty billion dollars, what would that do? You know, and so that day, I'm sure, is coming. Um, just because, you know, the awareness of the precarious nature of the monetary system and the $380 billion of new deficit and debt in August alone, as, as people become more aware of that, as a fiduciary, as a custodian of your client's money, you almost have to have some allocation to gold, to sound money. And... um so that will, I mean, those days will come. And again, that's why we all continue to own the mining shares, even though, you know, you just, most of the time, you know, they just leave you wanting to jump out the window. Um, but that, they, that I just, I'm certain the day is coming where these flows will increase in the sector. And when they do, there's just not that many places, you know, any investment, that, that, not that many investment opportunities. And so you get a lot of money, too many dollars chasing too few goods, right? And that leads to higher prices. Now, I guess coming full circle here, when it comes to the situation that we find ourselves in, the geopolitical situation, the financial situation, what are some points that people should consider uh, when protecting themselves, right? It's important to be aware and also prepared. So besides like investing in precious metals, what do you think uh, people should be looking out for or uh, concerned about at the moment? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the situation in North Carolina and Tennessee, you know, in upstate South Carolina. I, you live there, you think, man, I'm out here. You know, what's the, what's the biggest thing I got to worry about, you know? And then look what happens. You get a hurricane comes up, runs up against the mountains, dumps 30 inches of rain, and you see what happens. And now those, those poor people are completely isolated with no water and no food and no power. And so if you think it can't happen where you live, um, think again. Okay. So Gold and silver and, you know, physical precious metal ownership diversification out of dollar based at, you know, the uh, paper assets, digital assets, dollar assets, whatever, always going to be your shelter in a storm. Um, it just kind of go off on a tangent for a second. One of my favorite things I've seen lately that really illustrates this for people is when when gold went up through $2,500 an ounce, you know, whatever, six weeks ago. Do you remember seeing... Elijah, people saying, oh, a London bar, a 400 ounce London gold bar is now worth a million dollars. Remember seeing some of those? You go back in time when Nixon took the U.S., you know, temporarily suspended gold convertibility. A London gold bar cost $14,000. 
25 years later, by the late 80s, it cost $114,000. And now it's a million. And the gold hasn't changed. I mean, it's still just a gold bar. But if anything, I mean, illustrates for you your loss of purchasing power, it's that. So that's why you own physical gold and silver. It's a protection, it's your shelter in the storm of all this monetary madness. But beyond that, um, it's great. I mean, it's October, October surprise. I mean, we got to October the 1st, Elijah, and here they start coming uh, with this longshoreman strike. You know, it wouldn't be such a bad idea, you know, go ahead and put on your tinfoil crazy hat and go to Costco today, you know, get a few extra supplies, a few gallons of water, you know, all that kind of stuff. Wouldn't be a bad idea, I think, at this point. Definitely. Well, it's very good to have you back on, Craig, and thank you so much for sharing your insights today. If our viewers are interested in continuing to track this with you, they can go to tfmetalsreport.com. Can you share with our viewers a little bit about that and any last thoughts you had? Uh, amidst all this doom and gloom, um, this is, I, Elijah, it's almost 14 years. Um, we're coming up on our birthday next month. Um, we, like, if you're going to track the precious metals, I have found, there's, I mean, it's not just, like I said, it's not just a dot on the screen. Geopolitics and politics and monetary policy, and you, and you, you just go down the list of all the things that impact gold. So we talk about that every day. But it's a, I mean, it's a global community of people. And we recognize we're all in the same boat. So if you're looking for a community uh, where you can read and interact and find information that you somehow of course, you can't find all this yourself. So we all post it. We all, hey, look what I found. Look at this video. Look at this link. Um, it is a great store of information as well. It's $15 a month. So, it's, you know, I can't do it for free. But, you know, for 50 cents a day, I, I think it's great value. So, I'm, again, time like this, sign up for a month. If you don't like it, just cancel. But uh, most people that sign up stick around. That's why we've been around for so long. Again, tfmetalsreport.com. Fantastic. Craig, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. God bless to you, Elijah. Stay safe out there. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for September 30th through October 7th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one-ounce gold Canadian maples at just $60 over spot. Next, we have 2024 one-ounce silver Britannia at $3.10 over spot. And finally... The 2024 one ounce silver American Eagle is still just $5.25 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1 888 81 Liberty. That's 1 888 815 4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.